Next into the tank, an expo entrepreneur looking for a massive investment. I'm here asking the Sharks for a lot of money, but it's a huge opportunity for them. We're a proven business and we're ready to go to the next level. My name is Stan Cross, and I'm here today to seek the Sharks' help to turn Expocentric to a hundred million a year business and then take it global. I require a two million dollar investment and in turn I'm offering a 10% equity stake. Expocentric designs, constructs and project managers high quality custom exhibition stands for trade and consumer shows for some of the world's leading brands from Volvo to Mercedes to 3M Whilst our competitors charge through the roof to build and burn, Expocentric creates a modular, Meccano-like structure that is eco-friendly, reconfigurable and cheaper. I started Expocentric in my bedroom five and a half years ago. I would cold call during the day and then do production at night. Now we're a multi-million dollar company with over 50 staff and a 4,000 square metre fabrication facility. Expocentric stands out from the competition by being cheaper, better and faster. We are a one-stop shop and have everything under one roof. I'm here today to seek the Sharks' help because of a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. In two years' time, the new Sydney Convention Exhibition Centre will be opening its doors and all the world's leading brands will be coming to town. This is the opportunity to take a dream from my bedroom and turn it into a global empire. So which shark wants to get into the expo game? OK, thank you, Stan. So that was $2 million for 10%. For a valuation of $20 million, you must have some pretty impressive track record behind you. Yep, last financial year we did 5.8 million. I'm estimating our turnover will be 14.5 million this financial year. Are you the 100% shareholder Absolutely, of this thing? Absolutely, yeah. Well done, mate. That's a tremendous mm. place to get to. You said cheaper, better, faster. Yeah. How are you better? The approach that our competition does is they spend a huge amount of time doing full construction drawings. It's like building a house we can reconfigure all the same parts in a million different configurations, which makes us eco-friendly and a lot cheaper. So it's transforming one stand into something totally different. This is what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. So Stank, I can see one of the benefits is the Meccano-type modular system. I can see also that could be one of the liabilities or the issues. It's going to look a bit the same. I don't want to be rude, but it looks a little bit dated to me already. What would that cost a client to set that up? Average client would spend 50 grand on a stand, but we have clients that spend half a million dollars on one. Tell me about your sales cycle. So I have my sales guys, they'll be on the phone cold calling companies, saying you're exhibiting at a show, we'd like to provide you an opportunity. Some clients sign up for multi-year agreements, but uh, you know, we've got a large range of existing clients. So thanks for that. That was really an operational understanding. I want to understand about your sales cycle. They're starting, so the ones for next year starting to pay a deposit. All our clients do pay a deposit, so once they sign off on the final design, final costings, they pay a 60% deposit. Stan, I've never come across anyone in my life who speaks as fast as you. It's like I've watched a video and I've got on fast, but I feel like I keep on having to go pause. Sorry, I'll slow no, down. No, it's good, I'm getting a lot of information, I've just got to really concentrate. Your current capacity that you have in your factory, can you give me a little bit of colour around that? Uh, capacity spread out through the year is easy. The problem is all the shows cluster together. Like May next year, we're going to do over $3 million worth of work in one month. So to do 14.5 million, yeah. how many more people would you have to hire? Another 20, 30 casuals. That's a big job, hiring 30 or 40 people. So it isn't just a given that you're going to do 14.5. You're valuing your business as if it'll grow in significantly, nothing will go wrong, and, you know, because I can't see where I'll get my $2 million back for a long, long, long time. For that reason, I'm out. Well, I'm just going to try and slow things down a bit here for everybody. The exhibition business is exceptionally hostage to economic cycles. I saw the expo industry in the US just fall over, just post the GFC. Mm. You've been in it for five years, so you've ridden the upside. I disagree. Tell us what is going on in the marketplace of exhibitions. GFC hit, it came through like a train. We nearly went bankrupt. So I had to bring in house, I had to change a new model, a model that's cheaper and provides a better product. Then Kevin Rudd came in and started so Stan, offering... Stan, I'm just going to take you back to the question. Yeah, sure. What's going on in the exhibition industry? 
Some sectors are growing, so as, uh, as wars now, happen... There's the one industry are... which we we'll call exhibitions, OK? Is it growing as an industry? Look, I would say that it is probably stagnant at the moment, but our market share keeps increasing because clients are looking for a better alternative. And our strongest sector is pharmaceutical because they do 20, 30 expos a year. So and we're the there industry is stagnant yeah. at the moment. But as soon as the Sydney Exhibition Centre opens, it'll go through the roof in Sydney. One question, your top three people, how long have they been with you? Rob and Dylan have been there for two years. Maurice has been there for a year. So if I rang them up and said, what's he like as a boss, what are they going to tell me? Look, I put the pressure on. I'm, de I'm demanding. But they're loyal and they work hard and, you know, it's a very competitive market and you'll, you might get a brief on Monday and you have to turn around on Friday. And so no, I was really thinking what they might say about you. I think they'll say that I'm tough, that I'm demanding, but, uh, you okay. know, that I'm appreciative as well. All right. So, Stan. Yeah with five potential mentors sitting before you. Mm. Are you prepared to listen? Absolutely. No, absolutely. No, look, I, I don't know everything and, uh, I'll, look, I'll, I'll talk and I'll answer, you know, if I disagree. <laughs> Stan, you're going to have the last word, aren't you? <laughs> Sometimes there's a time for listening and time for speaking. OK. I'm out. OK, John, what do you think? Thanks, Anna. So, Stan, look, a few things. I mean, firstly, well done. Very few people in the world do what you've done, Thank you. which is fantastic. I have a concern about you, and it's been touched upon by Naomi and Janine so far. Your style is quite irritating. You don't listen. The minute someone's stopped, you just shoot. That tells me, as someone who's offering you some ideas, that you haven't listened to what I've said. You should be able to come in here and deal with us as though we're a board of directors or a potential mm. shareholder group, which mm. we are. The other thing is it's very hard to sit here and believe that you're going to increase your business by about 400% in the next 12 months. Mm. I'm not even sure if that's healthy. The wheels are going to potentially start mm. wobbling and falling off. So slow it down <laughs> I'm out. Thank you very much for considering. If I was like, I'll click through and you can oh, see... Oh, no, mate, we've seen enough. The, the yeah. variance no, in what we do, there I, is I, no I, stability. I think just prepare, be prepared for some feedback, actually. Sure. No, no, absolutely. I, and I'll just, just steady down, mate. I'll, I'll just keep talking, because you've done a lot of it so far. I like this because it's like you're a shovel shop. You know, when everyone's digging gold, you should be out there selling shovels. But I'm exceptionally worried about the cyclical nature of it. I've seen the little bubbles through the Silicon Valley lens over the years, and some of these conferences that were worth hundreds of millions, it's all of a sudden valueless. I'll tell you where I'm at. I think you're an interesting and quirky fellow, let's just say that, but that's okay. We're all unrepeatable miracles, so why shouldn't you be? Sure. One thing I've learned about business is nothing ever stays the same. So sooner or later, there's another kind of modular stuff coming. So time is not on your side. You need to get moving. Mm, of course. There's blood in the water. There's competitors out there. You need to take market share and take it quickly. Mm. I'm out. Thanks very much. I reckon you're doing it the wrong way. You can take this business and you can put it on the Australian Stock Exchange. It's currently a fantastic market to raise on the ASX. So you could probably raise five million bucks to your list. That's what you should be thinking about doing. Yep. That will get you set up for global growth. So if you wanted 500 grand, I can do that. And I'll look at dropping another 1.5 mil in if you list. You're not even sure you want to go public, are you, Stan? I wasn't playing at this stage because I think I can uh, get a much higher valuation in three years' time. But I, I hardly look at it. I mean, I think you have an amazing business here. I don't want to spend the next 12 months developing uh, listing papers or anything to do with the AXX. That's why we're uh, going to spend half yeah. a million dollars to bring yeah. people in to do it. Yeah, but it, it requires a lot of my time and pitching and everything else. I think that I get a much higher valuation in a couple of years' time when we're 100% solid and delivering the vision I want to be delivering. So thank you very much for the offer, but I'm going to say no. I look forward to you mailing in the prospectus. That'll be fantastic. See you, Stan. Thanks for coming. Have fun. Thank you, bye-bye.
Well, I feel exhausted. Oh, far out. I don't want to listen to the stock market for at least three, four years. So it's business as usual. Go back to work now and uh, sign more contracts.